Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you being here. We are going through the judgments of Yahuwah given through Moses to Israel's seed. I want to give kind of an overview so we know kind of who we're talking to and what's kind of, what's going on. If we go back to the Ten Commandments, that was in Exodus 20. We're going to do 22 today. Here's Exodus 20. He gave the commandments to Israel's seed. His Ezra men, a.k.a. the sons of Israel, a.k.a. and worst of all, the children of Israel. Remember, he told these men, his Ezra men, his sons, that they were not to come near a woman for three days before they were going to meet him at the mountain and he was going to give them his Ten Commandments. Well, he did. And we saw that it said, thou shall not, thou, thou, thou. It was each man individually, or you could even say it is the Ezra men, his son. There's no plural for Ezra. The Ger have a Gerim, but the Ezra, there is no plural. So they are his son, my son Israel. Let my son, my firstborn Israel go that he may serve me. He didn't say they, he said he. So the thou could be each man individually. And I tend to think it is more each man individually just because of how the commandments are put together. Or it could be all of them together, but it applies to each one. So after the Ten Commandments, Moses drew near to the thick darkness. He went up to the mountain yet again. And it was there that Yahweh told them about making altars and that everything that were covered last week, which I kind of entitled, uh, just so you know, that Yahovah treats men and women, sons and garim, children and garim, differently. Not everybody's treated the same in Yahovah's kingdom. And so I wanted to point these out, uh, and we're going to see that again today. We're going to see it next week as well. Uh, some examples. Here again is thou, if thou buy a Hebrew servant. This is buying one of your own, buying an Ezra man. And how and what circumstances would that mean? Here's, here is uh, Leviticus 25. If one of your brethren, one of thy brethren, I guess it's you, your brethren, uh, who dwells with you becomes poor and sells himself to you. I guess it is a thee. Thou shall not compel him to serve as a, a ved, a slave. As a hired servant and a sojourner, he shall be to you. So here is a man, man, man. So this is statutes that have to do with men. Uh, he's going to serve you. He's going to serve you six years. And some years he's going to go out and pay nothing. If he goes in with a woman, Baal, with a Baal woman, he's going to go out with his woman, it says. But... If the master has given him a woman, see now here's a different restrict or different rules regarding women. A woman goes out, comes in with her man, goes out with her man. She stays with her man, bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. But if the master has given him a woman, a man verse four, she has borne him sons and daughters. The woman and her children shall be her masters. You see, there's something different here. Uh, he goes on. Uh, here is, if a man, this is a man, an ish. Okay, we're talking about Israel's seed, the Ezra men. Sells his daughter to be a female slave, an ama or a shivka. Ama is the one who works outside the house. The shivka is kind of a main servant who's going to work inside the house. 
She shall not go out as the male slaves do. She doesn't go out at the end of six years. She's a permanent servant. We talked about if the master gives, takes her for his own, doesn't care for her. He's got to let, he's got to let her go on her own. She doesn't, she, he shall not have right to sell her to a foreign people since she has dealt, he has dealt with her uh, deceitfully. We never did figure that out. If he betrothed to his son, he's going to treat her as a daughter. If he takes another woman besides her, he shall not diminish her. This, the, the, the woman who became the daughter of the man who became his servant, he should not diminish her food, her clothing, or her marriage rights. We talked about a uh, man can have one woman, more than one woman in his life, but a woman can't have more than one man in her life. Your desire shall be for your man, and he shall rule over you. We talked about if a man strikes a man, and this is going to be important today as we go through this. If a man strikes a man so that he dies, he shall surely be put to death. Doesn't say anything about a woman. He could have said something about a woman. Why doesn't he say something about a woman? He does talk about a man striking his servant. If a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies. Under his hand, he, sure, he shall surely be punished. Not with anything. If he remains alive for a day or two, he shall not be punished. Why? For he is his property. Is a woman his property as well? Bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. We saw the 10th commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's woman. Or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I think she's his property also. Oh, that has other implications, doesn't it? Well, here's two men fighting. Talking about probably Hebrew men. And a pregnant woman gets hurt. It's her husband that's going to impose upon the man the penalty. How come it's not her? Because he owns her. Her husband owns her. We saw that if a man strikes the eye of his female servant or knocks out the tooth of his male or female servant, then he's got to let him go free. Here, if an ox gores a man, or look at, he could say woman. Here it says woman. But does the same woman above. If an ox gores a woman, a man or a woman, to death, the ox shall surely be stoned and the flesh shall be eaten. But look what it says. If the ox tended to uh, do it in past times and the owner knew about it and been warned about it, now, so that, at the, the, and it has not been, and he has kept, and he has not kept it confined so that it has killed another man or woman, the ox shall be stoned and the owner shall be put to death. Why does a man beat his male or female servant? Could it be because of issues like this? You had an ox. It was locked up. You put him away, but your servant let him out. It's not your servant who's going to be killed. It's you who's going to be killed because you've been warned. You see the difference? The buck stops with the master. And so the master has got to have his house working the way it should. Personally, I would have sold the dang ox rather than take a chance on it hurting somebody again, especially since I've been warned. But... These are issues that we have to understand because the buck stops with the master, the Hebrew man, the head of the house, the Adon. His life is in danger if his servants, including his woman, don't do things as he has called them to. Oh, I know. It doesn't sound bad. It sounds terrible. 
in the ideas and 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 uh, how our minds have been organized and programmed as to how we're supposed to live in the world. We've got to reorganize our brain and our hearts to Yehovah's ways, his statutes, his judgments, and his ordinances. There's a different, there are different duties and responsibilities for men as there are for women. But there's also, if you break that down, there's different responsibilities for a man's woman, his servant, his ama, his male servant, his female servant, uh, his children. And the gear who dwells with him. So, looking at this, I want us to just understand that there's differences. And aligning our life with Yehovah's ways isn't always easy. And it isn't always popular with the people around you. In the future, I may want to have more than one woman in my life. What do you think about that? Yahovah, Isaiah 4, says in the last day, seven women will take hold of one man. Let us be called by your name. No, we will provide our own clothes. We will provide our own food. Only let us be called by your name. Yeah, there's things that we have to think about. Well, let's pick up on 22. I'm going to try and get through 22 today. Here it is. If a man, this is an ish. Here it is right here, an ish. If an ish steals an ox or a sheep, it says sheep, it's flocks. It's, uh, the word is say, uh, and it means sheep or goat. If a man steals an ox or a, I'm going to call it a flock, and slaughters it or sells it, can't get it back now, he sold it or he's eaten it, he shall restore five oxen for one ox and four sheep for the sheep. It says the sheep for the, for the say, for the flock. If a thief, listen, this is still within the same understanding. We're talking about stealing sheep and goats. It says, if the thief is found breaking in. You know, I have to ask myself, what's he breaking into? I tend to think it's a house. But we're still talking about sheep and goats. Is he breaking into his field? Into his gates? As for men have gates. I think that's what he's breaking into. And he is struck so that he dies. There shall be no, it says, no guilt for his bloodshed. Bloodshed. No guilt. There's no word in here that says guilt. And it says blood. Here, let me just, this is a, a better one. I put breaking into his house or gates or both. Not many people have their goats in their house, though. Here it says, and for his blood, blood, his damim. It's plural of blood, for his blood. There's no guilt of bloodshed. Then it says, here's, this is the uh, Young's literal translation. If in breaking through the thief is found, and he has been smitten and has died. There is no blood for him. No blood for him. Damim. No damim for him. What does that mean? Now the next verse. I think this is happening at night because of what it says in the next verse. If the sun has risen on him. Here, let me read it in this. This is... Uh, Erdman's uh, something Bible, E-R-R. -R. Uh, where is it? I guess I don't have it here. Uh, if the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood for him. There shall be blood for him. 
didn't say shed for him, for blood for him. For he should make full restitution. Uh, it says, in shalaming, he shall shalam. It's, 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 it's Yehovah repeating himself on this restitution idea. If he, if he has nothing, if he has nothing, if he has not, not then he shall be sold for the theft. Did you hear that? Here's a Hebrew man that has stolen something. He's been caught. And now he's going to be sold for the theft. We have to ask ourselves, how does a Hebrew come into the service of another Hebrew? How does an Ezra man come in the service of another Ezra man? This is one way that it happens. Another way is it gets poor and he sells himself. But the one who's poor and sells himself is a pretty good guy. This guy, not so much. He's going to be sold. It says he shall be sold for the theft. Does that mean he's got to be the person who's going to take him as his servant? Is this a permanent servant? Has got to sell him for or pay for the theft that he took? So that is going to go to the owner? It may be. Here are some others. If the, son, if the son has risen on him, blood uh, on him, blood for him is due. It says is due. They A lot of them say is due. But it doesn't say is due. It just says, for him, blood. Repaying, he shall repay. See, they repeated it twice. Shalaming, he shall shalam. Okay, I get, think you get the idea. Now, the theft. We're still talking about the theft. The theft isn't something that is in your house. The theft seems to be sheep. And goats, I'm sorry, ox and flocks. Oh, that's nice. Ox and flocks. Flocks are sheep and goat. Here it says, uh, last sub subtitle of this theft. If the thief, if the theft is certainly found alive, so you found him with a goat under each one of his arms. If it is still alive in his hand, whether it is a goat or a donkey or a flock, he shall restore double. He's got to repay it double. This is interesting because we're going to see double again when the theft, the item that was stolen is found in somebody's hands. This is, this is a principle here. If it, if it was not found, it was moved away, he's got to pay multiple of it. But if it's found in his hand, he's got to pay it double. Now, here he is again. If a man, again, an ish. When you see this word ish as opposed to Adam, think Israel. Think Ezra man. That's an ish. They don't call uh, the the... I don't even want to say the mixed multitudes because they're the gear. Uh, they don't call people from other nations ish. They call them Adam. So that's kind of a context clue to know who it is that we're talking about. So here we are. If an ish causes a field or a vineyard to be grazed. If an ish causes a field or vineyard to be grazed. Is it the man or is it possibly the servants of the man who left a gate open or did something along those lines where his animals got into another person's field, another man's field or vineyard? It says, and let's loose his animal and it feeds on another man's man's field. He shall make restitution from the best of his own land and the best of his own vineyard. Remember, it's the house, it's the land. Everything belongs to the master. Even his woman belongs to the master. 
another reason. Yet another reason, I should say, that a man might beat his servant because he's letting the animals out. Remember, it's not necessarily the man who's doing all these things, but the book stops with him. Here is as if fire breaks out and catches in the thorns so that the stacks, so that stacked grain, standing grain, or the field is consumed. He who kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. So let's say, you know, I don't see it so much these days, and maybe that's because of the chemicals that we're putting on our fields. But I know when I was younger, I often saw people burning their fields. And I think they burn their fields to kind of, what would be the word that I want to use? Um, get rid of the weeds to make it pure so that when he plants his seed, only the seed's going to grow. So we burned our fields, but it got into it, and they called it uh, uh, stacked rain. No, catches in the thorns. Thorns makes me think of what's in between one field, one man's field and another man's field. There's kind of no man's land if you will. Uh, and some of these, they're not translations. They're, they're um, put into uh, more of our own words. Here is a paraphrase. That's the word I'm looking for. If there is a fire, this is BBE. BBE is Bible in basic English. If there's a fire, and the flames get into the thorns at the edge of the field, causing destruction of the cut grain or the living grain of or of a field. He who made the fire will make up for the damage. Here's a contemporary English version. If you carelessly let your fire spread from your property to someone else's, you must pay the owner for any crops or fields destroyed in the fire. Again. Is it you that's necessarily doing the burning? It may be that your servants are doing the burning. But again, the buck stops with you. If a man delivers to his neighbor money or articles to keep, and it is stolen out of the man's hand, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. Look at that. If the thief is found, he shall pay double. You found it in the man's hands. He hasn't sold it. It's still there. He's going to pay double. But I think it's interesting. They say money. You know what the word is that they use for money? I think this is it's a lot. The word is silver. Kasaf. Kasaf. It's silver. What does this tell me? He shall pay double. I think that if we're going to give, if we're going to ask our neighbor to take care of our, maybe he's got a safe and we want to put our money in his safe because we think it will be safer. What keeps him from saying, no, that's my money. I remember I had some guns at one point that I had to get rid of. I had to get them, get them off of my property. I had to give them to somebody else to keep. He sold them. And I never saw them again. He said, oh, you didn't give them to me. That makes me think you've got to get a witness. You've got to bring a witness. Or get a receipt for the item that's being stored. It says, if the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall be brought to the judges. Who are the judges? They are the Elohim of the city or perhaps the gates that are in your land. Remember, um, oh, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but in a sense, 
when Moses appointed rulers, rulers, they call them rulers, over thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens, maybe it was five hundreds, thousands, five hundreds, I forget what it is, we'll find it, uh, fifties and tens, uh, they were kind of the Elohim. They were the Elohim. They were the ones who were making the decisions. And they were all, I mean, what was there, 77,000, 79,000? I mean, there's a lot of them. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall be brought to the judges to see whether he has put his hands on his neighbor's goods. I had no judge to get my guns back. Remember, Yehovah says, you shall have no other Elohim but me. But a judge, an Elohim, that we're talking about in this context, is working with Yehovah's statutes and judgments and ordinances. Not the governments of the land. We're not talking about those guys, not those judges. These are the same. Well, we'll have to talk about that again. We'll, we'll go back back here. Um, so that's why I say, bring a witness. Get a receipt for for items that you're going to put into somebody else's hand just to keep yourself safe. He says in verse 9, for any kind of trespass, whether it be ox or donkey or sheep, here they're going on and saying, Clothing or any kind of lost thing which another claims to be his. The cause of both parties shall come before the judges. Whoever the judges condemn shall pay double to his neighbor. So there's yet another reason. Here's a property that's not yours, that is found in your hand. You got to pay double. You see how the principle is working out in every in every category that we've seen it so far. If a man delivers, I'm going to look at my note here. Uh, transgression, meaning, oh, uh, the pasa, pasa, transgression. It, they called it a trespass, transgression. Uh, masculine now meaning transgression, rebellion, though it can be, tra though it can be a transgression of one individual against another. It can also be a nation, a get transgression of one nation to another as well. Uh, here is uh, this is Jacob talking to Laban, and Jacob was angry and rebuked Laban, and Jacob answered and said to Laban, "What is my trespass? What is my sin? That you hotly pursue me?" Yeah, this is when he caught him. Okay, trespass. We're on 10. If a man deliver to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep, and it dies, is hurt, or driven away, no one seeing it, then an oath of Yehovah shall be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept that, and he shall make he shall not make it good. So here is a case: if the animal dies, is hurt or driven away, it's, it's gone. The owner has to take the oath from the one who is holding it for him in the name of Yahovah. Remember, Yahovah. Uh, uh, you shall not take, thou shall not take the name of Yehovah in vain. He will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So swearing in the name of Yehovah is very important. But if in fact it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to the owner of it. If it is torn in pieces by a beast, then he shall bring it as evidence and shall not make good 
and shall not and and shall not make good what was to, and shall not make good was to, it's exactly the way I say shall not make good for for shall not make it good. He's not responsible for it. He's got the animal right there. Now here's a man who borrows something from his neighbor. If a man an ish notice it's always an ish a man a man a man we're seeing this over and over again. Uh, later we're going to see thou 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 thou. Meaning Israel's seed. These are all judgments that Yahovah is giving to Moses to convey to Israel's seed. We're going to see that uh, at the beginning of 24. In fact, let's look at the beginning. This is on 14. I want to go to 24. I want you to just see that. Let's do that just real quick. I want to see where he's coming back down from the mountain. Here it is, 24. So, so Moses came and told the people all the words of Jehovah and all the judgments. What we see in general in 21, these are the judgments. And the people answered with one and answered with one voice and said, All the words which Jehovah has said we will do. Yeah, there it is. Back, easy peasy. Um, stolen from him. Uh, and if a man borrows anything from his neighbor and it becomes injured or dies, how about broken? He borrowed his chainsaw. And it became broken. He borrowed his his uh, skill saw, and it became broken. Whatever, something that belongs to his neighbor, injured or dies, is broken. The owner of it not being with it, he shall surely make it good. So if the owner's not with it when he's using it and borrowing it, he has to make it good. But if the owner's with it, they're using it together, he shall not make it good. Or if it was hired, you paid the guy to borrow your, to loan him your, or to uh, rent your chainsaw, rent his chainsaw. And it came, uh, it says, uh, if the owner is, was with it, he shall not make it good. If it was hired, it came for its hire. In other words, the loss is going to fall on the owner, not you, because you paid for rental on it, and that rental price is part of the replacement price if if it's going to get damaged. 16. Here it says, if a man, oh man, there's so much we can talk about here. If a man entices a virgin who is not betrothed, he's enticing a virgin and laying with her. It says he shall surely pay the bride price for her to be his woman. Oh, my goodness. The world, the earth that we live in right now, pretty much any woman who's not in her father's house, even the ones who aren't in their father's house, are fair game. In fact, the women are almost as bad as the men these days. We got our our TV programs, even Family Channel, that promotes sexual intimacy between young adults, even children. You know, brides were a lot younger in those days, too. Not that they couldn't be the same age these days. There's no difference. I But this is not about being pregnant. This is about losing her virginity and paying her father for what he has lost. Let me read the, let me read the next person before I even finish this, this, uh, this note. If her father utterly refuses 
to give her to him. He's going to pay the bride price. What's the bride price? We're going to see 50 shekels of silver. If the father utterly refuses to give her to him, I'm not giving my daughter to this jerk. He shall pay the money according to the price of the brides. A price of virgins. She's not a virgin anymore. He stole that from her. Well, there are some things that we've got to we've got to think about. You know, we treat our daughters like men. A woman is not a man. A woman in Jehovah's kingdom always has a covering. That's why this the 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 uh, Hebrew daughter, a Hebrew man's daughter that became a servant doesn't go free because she needs a covering. There's no uncovered women in Yehovah's kingdom. There might be some men who throughout their life gave her a bill of divorcement and said, get the hell out of here. You're making me look bad. She may end up being a whore. How is she going to support yourself? You know, we assume because women can do it these days that they did it those days. But we send our women out. We send them off to college. They're to totally uncovered. They lose their virginity. Probably lost their way before that in many cases. Because we don't care for our daughters. We treat them like men. They are not men. They need to be covered. So let me just read a few things here. This is uh, Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22 has quite a lot to say. This is kind of the end of Deuteronomy 22. But then we're going to talk about the beginning of Deuteronomy 22 also. Here it says, if a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed and sees his heart. This is the one I'm reading right now. I don't need to read that again. Um, oh, 22. And I guess we're going to. Deuteronomy, oh, this is, no, this is Deuteronomy 22. It almost sounds like it here. If a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out, then the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father, not the young woman, 50 shekels of silver. And she shall be his woman because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. Hear that? The man cannot divorce this particular woman because he has humbled her. He's got the responsibility now of caring for this woman the rest of his life. Ooh, that would stop a lot of fornication in this land, wouldn't it? Notice it's not about the woman divorcing her man. It's about the man divorcing his woman, giving his woman a bill of divorcement. A woman doesn't divorce her man. She can't do it. Unless you live in a land where we, have, we live under color of law and not true law. My woman divorced me. My first woman divorced me stole my children and it was the court who aided her in doing it under color of law i had done nothing wrong but this is how this is how it is in the world we live they they really aren't my children because of the marriage license they were the state's children we were the caretakers for the children and so they can make me make me Homeless, my wife, in a sense, a widow, voluntarily, and my children, fatherless. So I put, did you hear that? A man divorces a woman, not the other way around. Here, here's another one in Deuteronomy. Really important chapter. If a man takes a wife and goes into her and detests her and charges her with shameful conduct and brings a bad name on her and says, I took this woman 
And when I came to her, I found she was not a virgin. And the father and the mother of the young woman shall take and bring out the evidence of the young woman's virginity to the elders of the city at the gate. They saved the sheets. And the young woman's father shall say to the elders, I gave my daughter to this man for his woman, and he detests her. Now he has charged her with shameful conduct, saying, I found your daughter was not a virgin. And yet these are the evidence of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Then the elders of the city shall take the, that man and punish him. And they shall fine him 100 shekels of silver. Notice it's double. He paid the bride price. Now it's double, 100 shekels of silver. She's still in his hands. And give them to the father of the young woman. Oh, no. Uh, 100, where is it? 100 shekels of silver. And give them to the father of the young woman because he has brought a bad name on the virgin of Israel and she shall be his wife. He cannot divorce her. So she's still in his hand. He's got to pay double. But look what it says. But if the thing is true and evidences of the virginity are not found for the young woman, then they shall bring out the young woman to the door of her father's house. And the men of the city shall stone her to death with stones because she has done a disgraceful, disgraceful thing in Israel to play the harlot in her father's house. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Ladies, are you listening? Daughters, are you listening? You call many want to say there you are. I'm, you know, I'm God's people. But you don't follow God's commandments and statutes and judgments for a woman. We've got to start thinking differently. Let's go to 16 or 17. If a, oh, I did that one. If the father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money according to the bride of the virgin. Again, double. He's got her in his hands. Uh, this man has damaged another man's property, his daughter. This is exactly what we have been talking about in previous verses. He can't sell his daughter for the right price anymore because she's tarnished. So he's got to get it from this man. Uh, 18, you shall not permit a sorceress to live. A sorceress. Notice here it says a man. Up here it's been a man, 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 over and over. Now it's saying thou. From this verse all the way to the end of 23. I put through 23, 1, all the way through through, through through 23, except for a few verses. It's going to be thou. Second person, masculine, singular. Jehovah is talking to his Ezra, his son, Israel. Talking about afflicting. No, 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 no. Uh, where are we? We're on. What verse are we on? Here we are. Sorceress. Yeah, here's the sorceress. Practicing magic. Here's This is the word they use for sorceress. Kasaf. A primitive root properly to whisper a spell. That is to enchant. Practice magic. Uh, sorcerer. Which. Uh, here is. Word study definition. I like how they put this. A verb meaning to practice magic, to practice sorcery. It occurs with words of similar meaning in Deuteronomy 18.1, 18.10, 18, 
there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through fire or who practices witchcraft or a soothsayer or one who interprets omens or sorcerers. You know, we read these verses and we think, well, nobody does that. Oh, please. You have no idea how prevalent that is in the world. Putting your son or daughter into the fires. Magic and witchcraft. It's prevalent. Oh, wait till you see what's going to come out in the next few months. It's going to blow your mind. Maria, Marina, Marina Abramovich, witch, probably Hillary is the same. And many, many actors and actresses are falling into that category as well. You have no idea. We are going to put them down. Crimes against humanity. Uh, I love how they finish this, uh, as I recall. Yeah, here it is. Well, the exact meaning of the word is obscure. It involves the use of supernatural powers that hardened hearts against the truth. Hardened hearts against the truth. They are not interested in truth. This is why they've got to be put away. You shall not permit a sorceress to live. He goes on. Whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. Kind does not link with unkind. He who sacrifices Slaughters, this is the word slaughters, zavak, zavak, he who, he who slaughters to any Elohim, except to Jehovah only, he shall, sh he shall be utterly destroyed. Ooh, what does that mean? I wrote a whole series of articles regarding Leviticus 17 and making or eating sacrifices made to idols. You know, we're all very careful to eat meat. Uh, beasts that have split hooves and multiple stomachs. Fish that has fins and scales. But regarding the beasts in particular, yes, the beasts in particular, because that's where most of our beef and our goats and sheep come from. I don't want to include pigs. Hopefully you're not eating pig. Who were they slaughtered to? There's a lot of meat out there that is halal meat, slaughtered to Allah. Many stores have halal meat, halal meat. They turned the animal towards Mecca and slit its throat. Is that meat that we're supposed to eat? Does that get us kicked out of Israel? You know, one thing when you go through Torah, you never see a butcher. How come it never talks about a butcher in Torah? Are we supposed to butcher our own meat? I wonder. I think maybe we are. Does Jehovah want us living in cities where we can't raise our own meat? See, these are things we've got to ask ourselves. Sacrifices to any Elohim. How about doing things the way the world, the world, the Elohim of the world, the Elohim of the earth, not related to any thing of Elohim, of the Elohim's commandments and statutes and judgments, tells us to slaughter meat, doing it the way they want us to do it. 
is that slaughtering to any other Elohim except Yehovah only? It's pretty clear when they say except to Yehovah only. He shall be utterly destroyed. I don't want to be destroyed. The end of our chapter next week is going to talk about this. You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their Elohim. Talking about the people of the land and their Elohim, their lawmakers and judges. Thou shalt have no other Elohim but Yahovah. 22 of 21. I don't know how we're doing on time. Hopefully we'll get this done in an hour. Uh, thou shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him. For y'all were strangers in the land of Egypt. Yes, we were all gerim. Gerim is the word they're using here for strangers. Here it is. Gerim. It's got the end of the masculine plural at the end of it, Karim. You were all strangers in the land of Egypt. Before we partook of the Passover lamb, we were a gear. We circumcised ourselves, became, uh, ate the Passover, and became Ezra men. Now, look at this next one. Thou shalt not afflict any widow or fatherless child. Fatherless child. You know how that's usually translated in many translations? Fatherless child? Orphan. An orphan is a fatherless child. You don't have to lose both your mom and your dad to be an orphan. A fatherless child is an orphan. The world, ah, I put, a woman who divorces her man makes her children fatherless. She makes her children orphans. You know, she gets a badge of honor, single parent. Single parent, like that's a badge of honor. Be nice to her. Well, you don't know my husband, Michael. I'll come back. You don't know Yehovah's word, woman. Don't afflict a widow or a fatherless child. We are commanded, we Israel, are commanded to care for our widows and orphans. If my sister were to lose her husband, I'm going to take care of my sister and her fatherless children. That's our responsibility as an as a man. We don't take care of the widows and orphans in Babylon. This is what the world has us thinking. No, Israel takes care of their widows and orphans. In family. Not even in other tribes, in our tribe, in our family. We're going to take care of our widows and orphans. If you afflict them in any way, and they cry to me, I will surely hear their cry. 24, and my wrath will become hot, and I will kill you. With the sword, your women shall be widows and your children fatherless widows thy here it is thy nashim thy nashim thy women shall be widows that this is thy sons it doesn't even say children it says thy sons fatherless Again, my wife, my ex, made me homeless and my children fatherless. And it makes me wonder about the judges who did this to my family. How about the judges who make decrees under color of law? The law, color of law. 
looks like law, but it's not law. It's color of law. And take away a man's family. Yeah, I've got some bad feelings about what happened to my family. Broke my heart. Let's continue. It says, if you lend money, it doesn't say don't lend money. If you lend money to any of my people who are, if you lend money to any of my people who are poor among you, you shall not be like the money lenders to him. You shall not charge him interest. Now, does that mean we can't charge our brothers interest who have plenty of money? This says, those who are poor among you. You shall not be like the money lenders to him. Him, him. This we're lending money to men. Not lending money to women. We're lending money to men. The poor among you. You shall not charge him interest. Who could be really talking about? He says, my people. Any of my people. Uh, my people. My people. There's only two kinds of people. Ezra and Gare. And Jehovah's kingdom. They're both his people. Hopefully within the next year, the Gare is going to become an Ezra. If he doesn't, he gets kicked out of Israel. You don't want that to happen. Twenty-six. Almost done. Just a few more verses. If you ever take your neighbor's garment as a pledge, you shall return it before the sun goes down. For what? For that is his only covering. It is his garment for his skin. What will he sleep in? It will be that when he cries to me, I will hear. I am gracious. You know, this is one of the things. It's one thing to understand Jehovah's statutes and judgments and ordinances. Abraham always said it was important to know Jehovah and his ways. His statutes and judgments are his ways. But as we read these, we get to know Jehovah. It says here, I am gracious. Jehovah is gracious. Here's the word that they use, Hanun. Merciful. This word is used solely as a descriptive term of Elohim. Yehovah used these words when he revealed himself to Moses. Uh, 34, uh, it says, uh, And Yehovah passed before him and proclaimed, Yehovah, Yehovah, I says it twice, Yehovah, Yehovah Elohim, merciful and gracious, gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. One of one as one who is above all else merciful and abounding in compassion. But you, Adonai, doesn't say Yehovah there, it says Adonai, are Elohim full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. Yehovah is merciful and gracious, lost, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He says, you shall not revile Elohim, nor curse the rulers of your people. This Elohim that we're talking about right now is not Yehovah. They put a capital letter on it. I think it's a small g. It's the Elohim that he has put over us. It's the Elohim that we're talking about when we two men go to the Elohim of the city. It's those kind of men. Here in uh, Bible and Basic English, it says, you shall not say evil of judges. See, it gets translated as judges here. Or put a curse on the rulers of your people. Geneva Bible, what is that? Uh, 1599. 
Thou shalt not rail upon the judges, neither speak evil of the rulers of thy people. When Romans 13 talks about the higher authorities being submissive to higher authorities, he's not talking about the people of the land. He's talking about the people who are governing Yehovah's people in the synagogue. That's where they're going to learn to follow Yehovah. Well, the commanders that, that Moses put over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, those are all the Elohim that we're not supposed to speak evil of. You didn't like their decision? Tough. That's their decision. Don't speak evil of them. Not a good thing. You shall not revile Elohim. You know what? I wonder. No, it doesn't say Elohim. Uh, nor curse the rulers of your people. Again, I don't think it's Yahweh that they're talking about. You shall not delay to offer the first of your ripe produce and your juices, the firstborn of thy sons, and thou shalt and thou shalt and the firstborn the firstborn of thy sons you shall give to me. My Bacor, the firstborn of thy Bacor, you shall give to me. Thy sons, your sons, they are the man's best fruit. They are a man's best fruit, his firstborn sons. My firstborn is Wes. We're going to see, I'm a firstborn. We're going to see that we're both Yehovah's men, or should be. He goes on. Likewise, thou shalt do with thy oxen and thy, what does the word say? Uh, flocks, ox and flocks. It shall be with its mother for seven days. On the eighth day, you shall give it to me. We're going to give the firstborn, the car, of our oxen and our sheep, only the firstborn, all the rest of them are going to be ours that that that, that uh, male is going to generate. Is going to go to go to Yehovah. But notice it's on the eighth day. Isn't it interesting that it's the eighth day, the same day that we are to circumcise our sons? Is that circumcision a way of giving them to Yehovah? I know we need to redeem our sons. Uh, uh, there's going to be a price that we're going to see it uh, as we go through Exodus. There's going to be a price for redeeming our sons. I think we're going to see it when uh, Leviticus, uh, well, the Levites are appointed as a priests. Because our sons, our firstborn, were going to be the priests up until that point. Anyway, the eighth day, I think it's interesting. Israel's seed circumcises their son on the eighth day. Perhaps circumcision is about giving our sons to Yehovah, another father. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the, the sheep and the goats, they're generally going to go to the priests. Well, to the Levites and then to the priests. The Levites are going to give some of them to the priests. Um, last verse. And y'all shall be holy men to me. Holy men. Kodesh uh, here. Enoshi Kodesh, I think is what it was. Let me look. Uh, Enoshi Kadosh. Enoshi Kadosh. This is like uh, Israel's seed. This is holy men. Israel's seed. The, the latter one is the, uh, the, the uh, noun, and the adjective is holy, holy men. And Kodesh men, you, you, y'all shall be to me. Yeah, let's go put the you all in there since that's what we're talking about. Men, y'all. Or maybe I should do it the way uh, D writes it. Y'all. All right. Um, last verse. And you shall be holy men to me. 
You shall not eat meat torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. Uh, it seems like Wayne and I were having a conversation about this very verse last week. All right, guys, we have one more ver one more chapter to cover uh, that are judgments. Again, I want you to see over and over that there's differences between what men are expected to do, what women are expected to do, servants, servants, both male and female, and gam. All right. Love you tons, and hope to see you again next time.